I'm Jim Collison and live from the Gallup Studios here in Omaha, Nebraska. This is Gallup's Theme Thursday, Season 3, recorded on July 6th, 2017. Theme Thursday's Gallup webcast series that dives deep into the Clifton Strengths themes, one theme at a time. Today's theme is connectedness. If you have questions, comments, or contributions during this webcast, we do have a live chat room that's available for you right below the main video window. If you just look down there, there's a chat wing chat room. We'd love to have you log in. Bottom left-hand corner, there's a little login button. Click that. I'll wait for you. Go ahead and do it. Then click the guest account. Put your name in where it says guest. Take that those numbers out. And uh, then we'll know who you are. You can join in the chat room, ask us questions live, and it works on a mobile device as well. If you're listening to the recorded version or have questions about uh, custom strengths coaching solutions for small, medium, or large organizations, you can contact us, send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. Don't forget to visit the Gallup Strength Center, just gallupstrengthcenter.com. For all your Clifton Strengths coaching resources and training needs, you can also catch the video now downloadable and offline, audio and video, if you want to listen to it on the road, in a car, on a train, in a plane, those kinds of things. Uh, we have a new resources page coming in the next couple of weeks. We're still continuing to work on it. It's on our coach's blog, coaching.gallup.com. Micah Librant is our host today. She works as a workplace consultant here at Gallup. And Micah, always great to be back with you on another theme Thursday. And welcome to Connectedness. Thanks, Jim. I'm super excited about connectedness. I spent my morning um, doing something I have to sheepishly admit was the first time I'd ever done. I listened to uh, the Connectedness Season 1 through my podcast app. And it's so easy, Jim. You have, you've, I don't know why I didn't do this before. If you're like me and haven't done it that way before, um, it's going to change your whole world. Just go to whatever podcast app you have on whatever phone you have and search for Gallup. And then they're all there and they're listed. And so I got to hear Kurt and, uh, and Mary Sue talk about connectedness. And it was a great way to start the day. And I think we can take it even further, expand upon the great um, discoveries that have been made about connectedness today with Nicole. And we're going to bring Nicole in here in a second, but we need to talk about, by the way, Nicole, thanks for staying up so late for us. It is 2 a.m., right? I think it's 2 a.m. in your, your time zone. So thanks for making the dedication to stay with us. But Micah, we always start traditionally with you going through the companion guide. If you haven't downloaded that, hit pause, go to the Eventbrite page or whatever right there on the live page, download the companion guide. You'll want to fill this in, then replay and join us live. But Micah, as we think about connectedness, I always look forward to this part. What are we talking about? Connectedness falls into that relationship building domain, but you'll hear us today talk about connectedness in a lot of ways as this uh, connector theme. It, um, I mentioned in the pre-show to, uh, to Jim and Nicole that it's sort of like a really great pair of blue jeans. It changes and goes with whatever theme you've got. So it can feel strategic. It can feel maybe even, it can feel very influential. There might even be aspects of connectedness that help you really get things done uh, through that executing piece. But really, um, the way that we describe it and the way that we classify it in terms of leadership, it is about people. It's about that relationship building place. Uh, the definition of connectedness is that everything happens for a reason. It's a, a sureness um, and an ability to see and imagine the purpose behind things happening, even if you don't exactly understand the things themselves. So if you think about it that way, it's a lot of, uh, it, it's, it's not necessarily an, an attraction to ambiguity, maybe like ideation or uh, adaptability might be. It's more an attraction to larger mystery that you can ground in purpose. Um, and some people might call this uh, the collective unconscious. Others might call it uh, spiritual. Um, I remember being in a session that I was teaching once where the person who read their connectedness in their top five was actually kind of offended by how spiritual it sounded because it is, um, in many cases, it can be about connecting to things without necessarily being able to see them, which when you say it that way, it does sound almost religious even. And I asked her, you know, why do you, why do you struggle with this? And she said, well, I, I, I'm not religious at all. In fact, she said, I'm, I'm absolutely an atheist, but I'm an economist. I said, tell me more about your economist, how you define yourself as an economist. She said, I believe and I know with certainty that whatever I do is going to have an equal and opposite reaction. And she almost sounded, I mean, she's talking about economics. She's also referencing uh, physics. And I think that um, the, the commonality behind that and the real definition of connectedness is the ability to see the world and respond to the world as if it is a giant system. System. Now, that system might be spiritual, it might be religious, it might be economics or, or physical or about that physical scientific world, but whatever it is, it is an awareness of the responsibility it brings to the system that you're in. Uh, 
uh, people with high connectedness are considerate, they're caring, they're accepting. Oftentimes we talk about connectedness as bringing a calmness. And I think that calmness can come from sort of a, a realization that whatever's going on in the moment is only part of the moment. And that that is that moment is going to lead to something bigger, whether that's into the past, into the future, or into something even bigger that we can't all comprehend. It sounds a little bit fuzzy, and I think that that's the beauty of connectedness: is it doesn't have to be black and white. Uh, Kurt Liesfeld, one of my favorite um, strengths uh, strengths people in the world, had connectedness and analytical. And I, I think these are two themes you could contrast. Analytical is about show me the proof, help me understand the hard facts, whereas connectedness is about there's a connection there, even if you can't describe it. And so these themes absolutely could exist together, but sometimes it's easier to, to contrast that. So um, as I was going through connectedness and thinking about how to define it, the one theme that kept popping up for me was ideation as being similar. And I wanted to be sure that we don't confuse people on the definition of, of both of these. Ideation, of course, is a strategic thinking theme, but it is about finding links between seemingly disparate phenomena, being able to say, hey, there's a piece of that story that reminds me of a piece of the other story. And I can see those connections where other people can't. The difference is I think connectedness also sees those connections. In fact, if you listen to season one, you'll hear Mary Sue talk about her connectedness as being like a series of grids and lines that overlays everything. She can see how people and events are connected. Uh, the difference is I think ideation creates on top of that ideation uses that connection as a starting point for bringing something that hasn't been there before. I think connectedness is a little bit more contemplative and maybe a little bit more people focused. So connectedness uses those connections that it sees between people, between events, between ideas, um, between experiences to really be present with, with other humans. You absolutely could have them both, um, uh, and but they do come from slightly different places. Let's talk about what this looks like as uh, as a leader. So, if an if as an individual, connectedness means for you, my purpose has a reason. Then, as a leader, it could be our work makes a difference. Sort of that that singular individual contributor versus how could this benefit somebody else. I think about a leader with high connectedness as being a wise big picture advisor, somebody who can zoom out beyond just what's right in front of us and help a group of people see something bigger, some sort of um, larger or maybe more long-term impact that they're driving toward. It can be, uh, for a leader, it connectedness brings a calming presence, perhaps insight into purpose, into reaction, into results that otherwise would not be there. If you are a leader with connectedness, find ways to communicate those connections that you see, even if it's not obvious. Don't be afraid of um, helping people see things that to you might seem a little bit out of left field or a little bit strange. I think a lot of the the value of connectedness is that other people don't have it <laughs> and, and that you can help people understand perhaps and lean into where they are right now by giving it some perspective. So what questions can you ask that expand other people's thinking? What specific examples of connection or of purpose can you illuminate? What can you shine a spotlight on? What are you noticing or feeling? Um, give yourself, find a way through through studying, through meditating, through talking out loud. Find whatever your best way is of bringing that awareness out of your soul and into your words so that you can help demonstrate that kind of connectedness in a way that benefits other people. I think the benefit you're really looking for is um, maybe putting them at ease, maybe expanding the creativity or even the productivity of other people. Uh, and if you've got that as your goal, then you can use connectedness to really say, how do I make um, this understanding of every person, every project, um, every, every good deed even, uh, how do I take the fact that I can see that that all is connected and help other people see that as well? I, I have connectedness number six in my life. And in, and I, in many cases, it feels a lot more logical than, than mysterious. I understand that if I shut off a light in my office when I'm not there, that at the end of the month, that's going to affect the electric bill. It's going to be smaller. So it doesn't have to be, this morning I was coaching a leader who did not have connectedness and um, almost disparagingly referred to it as the yoga 
incense uh, hippie theme. <laughs> and I didn't tell her that I had it number six or that I was burning incense at the time and doing yoga. But um, I think a lot of the times it does get a little bit of a, a mysterious flavor. It doesn't have to. It's also uh, the ability to have maybe some logical, some sensical, some almost black and white examples. And that's a great perspective to bring forward as well. Remember that connectedness is not positivity. It's not just your job to make people happy. I think it can be your job as a leader to offer perspective, even if that perspective doesn't in the moment make somebody happy. Um, it anchor, anchor your connectedness to your values or to the values of your organization. What is it that you want people to connect with? Because you can probably understand a much bigger picture than other people can. You can see a lot of potential or a lot of purpose, or you can sense that it's going to be. I think that there's a part of connectedness that isn't just about what's proven and what's already happened. It I have a good friend of mine who who actually told me that we should be in a great relationship together because because we're meant to. And she's got very high connectedness. And that was all she could say. She couldn't back it up with anything else, but it led to a great relationship. So I think use that connectedness, use your intuition and ask yourself, what is it that you really want people to to anchor around? Um, maybe it's Maybe it's, and again, that we're talking about it almost as an influencing theme. Maybe it's to serve the people that you're with. Maybe it's their own health, improving their own well-being, um, understanding themselves better. Um, think about what is your, what is your goal? Where do you want to take somebody? And then how can you use the gift of perspective to help get them there? If you want to think about goals as a as a leader, there's four main ones that we talk about: uh, the needs of followers. Your followers need trust, stability, compassion, and hope. I'll just talk a little bit more about how connectedness, specifically leaning into and investing in connectedness, could serve these four purposes, and then we'll get to hear from Nicole about what this means to her. So, a leader with connectedness might use this theme to build trust by individualizing your reassurance. How do people need to hear your perspective? Ask yourself, how, do, how does each individual that you interact with best hear in general? Do they need facts and figures? Do they need one-on-one -on -one time? Do they need to go out and try something on their own? How is it that you can really make sure you are speaking the language that they speak in order to get through to what they need? I think that's going to build trust over time. A leader with connectedness could provide stability by helping expand others' horizons beyond present chaos. How can you keep people's focus on the long term? How can you keep people's focus on a bigger plan? Now, if that bigger plan for you includes you know, previous lives or, or the future or the past, I think stability is helping people see that um, that wherever we are right now is, is going to be a part of something Thing bigger. And so I think, how can you think about some great questions that help other people have that perspective? A leader with connectedness could show compassion by learning other people's individual stories. What brought them here? What were some of the big moments in their life that, um, that led them to where they are today? That will feed your curiosity. It'll feed your connectedness. And I think it'll feed your ability to truly individualize and connect on a compassionate level with your followers. And finally, we get to talk about hope. Really, hope is, is the belief that tomorrow is going to be better today and that I have the ability to make it that way. So I just encourage you with connectedness to say, how might today, what we're experiencing right now, lead to an improvement on, to, on tomorrow? How might a good today lead to a better tomorrow? Show up in hard places and ask great questions. Uh, put yourself in the space of teams who are struggling. Put yourself in a family who needs help. Um, be there to, to serve where service is most needed. And show up with curiosity. Show up with perspective. Maybe just even show up. Uh, I think that connectedness doesn't need to have an answer, but it can ask some really great questions. That's my take on connectedness plus um, the actual definition there for you. So that should help you fill out the first page of your companion guide. Now I'd invite you to flip that over to the next page. We get to listen now to what connectedness looks like in a real leader. Nicole Felody is with us. Nicole, welcome to the program. Hi, Micah. Thank you so much for having me here. 
Thanks for being here. And thanks for joining all the way from Australia, all the way from, from 2.16 in the morning local time. It's a, it's really great to have you, Nicole, not just because of your great connectedness, but you are, are so involved in our strengths community. So I want to start by just thanking you for your energy around this, for the great work that you're doing. Um, I know that you work quite a bit with, with kids and teens. Um, you're thinking all the time about how to, how to infuse strengths into education. Thank you for, for really doing this. You're a Gallup certified coach. Could you yes. tell us just a little bit more about, about what you do? Uh, so I'm a teacher by trade, English teacher by trade. Uh, however, I now work in a learning and development space, largely uh, specialising with teenagers and teachers, uh, working um, professional development for teachers, uh, working with parents, working with families, helping students um, develop their learning skills and career coaching. So really so much of my work is about helping teenagers find a voice helping teenagers be the people that they need to be, helping teenagers feel confident. And the best way for me to get through to teenagers is to help teachers because they're the ones that are with the teenagers all the time. Excellent. How does connectedness show up for you in that work that you're doing? I guess I'd have to say connectedness shows up for me all the time. And I know it's one of those things that we were talking about. Connectedness works as a dynamic all the time. I like to think of my um, talents as a family. So strategic is dad. Strategic is my strategic number one, that's dad, but connectedness is mum. And mm -hmm. then learner input and uh, intellection are of the kids. So with mum and dad, so with strategic and connectedness, keeping watch over everything, they're just constantly on making sure that everything's going all right. So when you think about a mum, mum always knows where the kids are, mum always knows, got a finger on the pulse, knows where everything is. It's a bit like, you know in Harry Potter, how um, Molly, Ron's mum has the clock and knows where everything is. So that's essentially how my connectedness works. It's aware of the surroundings, the people, the situation. It's continually getting the information from learner input and intellection. And it's working um, ta in tandem with strategic to just keep that very much big picture view. A family and Harry Potter, that might be the best kickoff for, for most <laughs> creative idea of how to explain a theme. I love that. <laughs> um, when did you when did you first notice your connectedness? Is it something that's always been with you? I think so. Look, I've always had a deep love of the ocean. I've always had a deep, deep love of the bush. Um, my happiest place is when I'm in the bush and in the ocean. So you know, I grew up place called French's Forest, which is very much um, a bush setting, but yet we were uh, 10 kilometres or a 15-minute drive to the beach. And so for me, it's always been very much being part of the fabric of life, very much also being part of a community. Community has always been very important to me. Um, interestingly enough, as I said, both my mother and father have connectedness. So I don't think I have known anything other than being part of something more than myself. It's just some, knowing that, have you had to seek that out professionally? Um, is that something that became like, did you look obviously for a job that would keep you connected to a community or is it just some, something that happened? Ah, it's a great question. I wanted to be a teacher from when I was very little. Um, I used to play shops with my cousins, always from a very close family. So family's always been very important. Um, I did, do a few other jobs before I actually went back to university and became a teacher. Uh, but it was always going to be what I was going to do. I can't actually remember not being part of a community. I was involved in scouting movement when I was younger. I had a horse when I was younger. I was out in the bush horse riding all the time. Um, it wasn't until I did Strength Finder and had a name for it that it all fell into place. Mm. What did that mean when it fell into place? How did that change things? <laughs> it was, I'm an English teacher by trade. So when I had the vocabulary to actually be able to explain it to other people, uh, I've got intellection at four and intellection is very much a part of who I am. I've always told stories, stories and um, imagination's always been a big part. And I think it's very much a matter, it's that connected intellection dynamic. I've got empathy at number uh, seven. So my connectedness goes both wide and deep and it goes both into the emotional and the thought process. One of the things I realised is that I connect to a person through their thoughts and then through their thought I intuit the emotion. 
Mm. And here's another analogy as an English teacher in me. I'm always metaphor and analogy. And I hope anyone out there doesn't have too much of a phobia with spiders. <laughs> but I like to see my connectedness as a giant web. Mm-hmm. And it's a giant multidimensional web. So as a spider who would sit in the middle of the web can feel a tingle in any part of the web and know exactly what's going on because they feel the vibration. And so for me, connectedness is very much about that. Any sort of, um, it just senses what's going on. So in the classroom, for example, I could be in the classroom and I would, the peripheral vision or the, I I use energetic vision, energetic feeling for one of another um, word, but just like a dog can hear a dog whistle. I could be in the classroom and know what was going on off to my left, to my right, and just have that uh, whole vision of the whole class at, at any one moment in time and know when a problem was going to start before the problem started. Whoa. So what did you do? Would you address it and call it out before it even happened? Most, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was just about being able to see. It's just that sense that I could be working with a student here, but the, you know, the, the so-called teacher eyes in the back of the head would know there was something, there was a couple of kids over there not necessarily on task and I could turn and look and there was enough of management of the classroom to know what was going on. And that was just expanding out the connectedness. That's what I think anyway. I think that might be a better example of how connectedness can provide stability than what I offered before uh, because you can keep everybody present and and be there with them and set expectations. Definitely, definitely. When you think about those four needs, uh, which one do you feel is most obviously connected to your connectedness? It's going to be a typical connectedness answer, but they all come in together. Love it. they, (laughs) They all come in together on that whole idea of belonging. Um, as I said, I work a lot in the teen space and belonging is so important for a teenager. And yet they also want to be independent. And so, as a where I would use my connectedness is to provide that safety net so that a person always knows that they're held and yet they've got that the the ability to run, they've got the ability to go where they need to go, knowing that they're still connected by a, a cord or still connected by some sort of um, thread and that I know I'm with them even if I'm not side by side. So I think that was, so that's how it, it, it provides all of them. All at once. Of course it does. All of them. I love it. <laughs> is there anything you have to do, anything you need to be mindful of to make sure your connectedness is, is at its best? One of the hardest parts with connectedness is time. Time management is something I have to really consciously pull on my other talents. Connectedness, at least for me, past, present and future exist simultaneously. So I will slip in and out of time without being aware of it. And I think, too, having uh, intellection can be part of that very much as well. Um, but it is literally like um, being able to be aware of and see past, present and future and how something is situated within the past that's going to have a relationship to the future by what's happening right now. And I know I've got my strategic and my strategic likes to know where I'm, where I'm starting where I'm going and then I can sort of play along in between, but it's really connectedness that helps bring that all together. Nicole, that's a pretty big, I mean, in that statement you just made, that's a pretty big concept. Do you have any, because I I, I can imagine some folks are like, okay, what does that mean? I I know I'm that (laughs) way. I don't see things that way. Can you give a, do you have any examples uh, you could give of in a real life situation of maybe where you've seen that in somebody and, and how you could work that out to their advantage? That past, present, and future existing at once? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How does that actually work out with people when you think in the context of leadership? What's the advantage to that? It's really about understanding where we are right now, the impact of what has happened in the past, and how that's going to influence the future. Yep. So that any decision is made with full knowledge of the past and the future simultaneously. So an example with that, I used to work with international students and there was obvious um, movement in the with international students, how things were going to go. Um, they weren't here in Australia. The Some of the regulations weren't as strong 
and I knew what had been going on in the past. I knew where we were right now. I knew there needed to be new things in the future. So I partnered up with a couple of other schools and a couple of other people in a similar job to what I was in. And we were already set to go. And then um, the Department of Immigration was doing some legislative work and they came and spoke to us about what we were doing. So as I said, that's sort of how I see past, present and future all at once. I think it's a great awareness. It's a big perspective. Um, in the chat, somebody asked, how do we, any great activities that we can bring out the utility of, of connectedness? How can we help translate that kind of perspective beyond just a sense into something that other people can can use? So your example of, you know, entire departments coming to you to, to ask a little bit about what's going on. I think what you do or or what do you feel like you offer that translates connectedness into a benefit to other people? What do people come to you for when they're, when, how do they make the most of your connectedness? That's where I think when we come back to that idea of hope and that idea of a safety net. So people will come to me when they don't understand. And as I said, I know I've got my, my learner input and intellection, which very much can provide, it's like you were saying before, I can provide the science. So I can provide the, the facts. I can provide it's not just out there sort of things. So when people are unsure about something and they just want to feel connected, they want to feel like somebody cares. So, for example, with my students, they knew that they could come and be with me or come and talk to me about something and they could be concerned about, they could be concerned about problem A, but really they weren't concerned about the problem they came to talk to me about. There was something underneath it. And because I can talk down through the levels through the layers and because I could hold them hold the space so that they felt safe and we could talk down through what it was that was actually worrying them so that's one of the main ways with connectedness that it would help being able to see beyond what was immediately in front of me to the other parameters other things that it could be connected to I love that phrase of, of hold the space probably something that you got even better at by adding teacher training to it, right? But being able to to really be there. I think that's the best way of of describing that kind of calmness or that that idea that this is something bigger. There's some 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 place that we're maybe we're not seeing. That's right. That's right. So do you feel like your connectedness ever struggles? I mean, do you ever do you ever feel frustrated if other people can't see what you see? Or when does connectedness feel frustrated? Yeah, when I was um before I really understood it, um, I was working, I used to work with international students and we had a lot of international students at the school and the, it was very much a part of trying to make sure, putting in place structures so that there was integration and very much part of making sure that my teacher colleagues understood what the international students needed that was slightly different to what um, the local students needed and really having to go around and change a whole culture of the school. And so I was really calling in on my connectedness to show it, it really is that whole idea of bridge building, taking down barriers, build under, um, um, removing silos so it's not just the English department, the maths department. It's really about us all working together as a community and us providing a structure that the international students could feel at home. And sometimes when people didn't get it <laughs> or when people didn't understand that sometimes international students needed things slightly different, it would get frustrating. Um, the other thing that's interesting too about connectedness is that it needs to be connected. So if for some reason I was left out of something and I didn't know what was going on, um, look, learner likes to know information, input likes to gather information, but I think too very much connectedness if it's not, um, yeah, if it's not, if it's not included, well, that's how it was for me very much anyway. If connectedness didn't have its finger on the pulse, if there was a, a one of my web threads had broken, that's when I'd get frustrated. What do you do to make sure you stay connected? That's really when um, it, it's almost like learner sends out, it's as a spinnaker, it sends out, sorry, connectedness sends out learner and input as a spinnaker to see what information we need to find to then anchor that point. Can you talk a little bit to the relationship building aspect of connectedness? Why does it live in that domain to you? I think it, well, especially for myself when I've got four strategic thinking um, uh, talents and then so connectedness is my relationship building talent. 
and it is the one that I lead with that, um, as I said, for me, it's like mum. It is the one that I build all my relationships through. And it's about, and this is another interesting thing with connectedness, it almost seems to assume rapport straight away. So it's very rare that I meet, when I meet someone and I start talking to them, I am an open book from word go. And I also, um, I'll speak to someone like I've known them for a long time, almost from word go. So it's almost like it assumes rapport straight away. Um, and I am looking for the connection. So I'll be deliberately um, asking questions or looking for signs or looking for, at body language, trying to find where that, uh, where that intersection is, where that connection is. This, this family of your themes is really helpful. I think about the, you know, connectedness is just what's always sending out those feelers, what's always aware of things. Um, and then sending out your, <laughs> your learner and input or sending out the, the intellection to go do some, some further research. Has, has connectedness ever let you down? Have you ever been wrong about your intuition? Oh, that's a good question. No. No, connectedness doesn't let me down. What lets me down is if I haven't listened to it. Um, I think, and this is interesting in some ways, I know, um, you know, the, the whole idea that futuristic can, has an idea about what a thing's going to be like in the future. Connectedness can almost, and I know it, it's that combination of connectedness and strategic, it really sees the pattern. Mm -hmm. So there's just been so many times where I've thought this is going to, and with learner as well, being able to see where the trend goes and there's been a few times where I haven't listened to my intuition enough to think this is how something's going to this is what's going to this is how things are going to be and I could have jumped on something quicker if I had have listened to my intuition a bit more it hasn't really ever no I can't think of a time where it's led me wrong where connectedness can be difficult as I said is if a connection breaks mm -hmm. and that can hurt a lot yeah or if a relationship breaks oh yeah 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 um and there's something even um i've noticed as it's only something i noticed as i've gotten older even as a child i'd always have like one really close friend i've always had just one really close thing that is my main stable anchor and then i'll go from there I think that that notion that it hasn't let you down as long as you listen to it is a great indicator of real talent. And maybe that's something to ask people around any of their themes. Like, has, has it ever let you down? Because I think when it's really yours, when it's really innate in you, then that is a, just a, a perfect illustration of what we mean by strength, which is that, uh, you know, the ability to perform at near perfect levels. Um, and so you can, you can try and fake it. You can say, I've got a network of spies. <laughs> I'm into, I'm into a lot of, uh, TV shows lately that involve networks of spies. You, know, you could try to set up systems that would look like connectedness that would try to, you, know, you could research the past and the present and the future, and you could send out little feelers, but if it's not true connectedness, it's not, you can't rely upon it like you can. Um, that that question of as long as I listen to it is is great advice and a great understanding that you know, this is this isn't going to let you down as long as you feed it what it needs in order to thrive. That's right. That's right. It's I think connectedness always works with a dynamic. I th we said that you know we're talking about it's very rarely it it doesn't work on its own, and mm. so it is always calling in on the other talents quite deliberately. And it's interesting whenever I um, speak with anyone. Um, you know, if I can never hear one talent in isolation. It's always being able to hear or recognise talents working together. Um, even when I meet people, I see people working together. It's mm -hmm. What do you do to feed your connectedness? Um, it's, it works two ways because there's, there's the two aspects of connectedness. One is that very close um, affinity to nature and the other part is the, um, the relationship part. So there are times when my connectedness just needs to be able to get out, put, put my feet on the grass and switch my glass and feel the grass or uh, be out on the beach and feel the sand between my toes. I swim every day. If I don't swim, I, I miss being in the water. So that a big part of it is, is being in nature. Um, it's very tactile. So I like to be able to feel a tree. It's very tactile. Uh, and then the, but then the other side is if I'm with people, I like to be able to 
you know, have a hug or hold, you know, with, when I'm with my partner, I'll hold hands or um, with the kids, it's, it's very tactile. So being able to touch. Excellent. Mm-hmm. You mentioned uh, your, your family are your strengths, like the, the or the strengths are your family. Um, right. I want to follow that thread and, and say, how does connectedness show up for you in your actual family? How has connectedness <laughs> made you a, a great leader of, of your kids and your partner? Uh, it's interesting. Um, my mum and dad are, um, both have connectedness. So um, connectedness is something I grew up with. And as a, as a family, I think the kids have always known who I am, where I am, um, and the ability to, to join a lot of different things. So when the kids were quite young, for example, we'd watch TV and I always watched, I'd watch the TV shows that they enjoyed to watch with them. And then we'd be talking about the, um, the characters and whether they would do the same sorts of things. And we'd be literally connecting their lives to what was going on uh, on the screen or on, the, on particular TV shows. And so we've got this really close relationship even now. The kids will say, oh, I read this book or I saw this film or I heard this song and mum, you'd really love it because, and they can connect everything. So it, it's just about being very close as a family, um, very close with my brothers, very close with um, my cousins. Um, my kids are very close with their cousins. So it, it, it's just about having that community. Family My ecosystem. Community. Yeah, the way that you talk about family, it sounds like it's 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 part of something bigger. Yeah, you're a strengths coach. What does connectedness mm-hmm. look like when you're coaching? I think when I'm coaching, it's very much about with a dynamic. So even when I start coaching with someone, we do the individual. I start with I might start with their first talent that we talk about, but then as soon as we've done the talent number one, it's always then dynamic in with the others, and so. Um, I use lots of analogies when I'm coaching, um, tell lots of stories when I'm coaching. And so the, what, how connectedness works is being able to uh, find the link between um, the talent of the, the person's talent and their stories. And so what I'll do, I'll listen to their stories and I'll be writing down. And when I'm writing down, I'm writing it very much like a, um, like a brainstorm. And I'll just have circle certain things that I hear them say and then afterwards, when I feed back what they've said, because of the way it's been written down, and I've just been writing down what intuitively feels okay, and we can almost then map a map a uh, a course through what they want to do by what I've written down as a result of listening to them. There's such a makes- great connection between your connectedness and strategic and your storytelling. Oh. On top of that, it's it's here's the outline. Uh, I think. It's it's hard to extract the two, and I, I have both connectedness and strategic as well. Um, but I think what I'm hearing is it, the connectedness piece, as you said, I'm writing down intuitively what makes sense. So it's That's almost right. like you are releasing a little bit of that to the bigger picture coming through you versus you just strategizing and, and being the storyteller yourself. It, yeah, is that accurate? I think so. I think so. It's I would find it hard to to know what strategic would be like without connectedness. When I first did uh, Strength Finder and I had, saw I had strategic number one, it was quite strange to me because I'm not a chess player. I'm not a poker player. I don't mm. think, I didn't think I thought five moves ahead. And even yeah. now it's, I, it's, even if I was going to play chess, it's, I guess, I do what feels right. And I, so I think that's the connectedness part. The strategic will see the pattern. Strategic likes to plan. Strategic likes to know front and the back. Strategic likes the big picture. But it's connectedness that glues it all together. And probably that may, maybe makes you a little bit adaptable too, is that, you know, when the plan doesn't work, what do yeah. you do? That's right. Well, if the plan doesn't work, and this is, and this is one of the interesting things and, and, and one of the big misnomers almost, or I call it a misnomer with connectedness, I know that people will often say that with connectedness things happen for a reason and there can be a, oh, I'd say almost like a raw version of connectedness that just will let things happily go along thinking, oh, well, what's meant to be will meant to be. Um, and I like to, well, one of the things I'll often say is that it was meant to be story actually takes away agency from a person. And so I don't like the, it was meant to be story because it's, people can, um, say, oh, well, it was just meant to be. And that means they haven't actually had agency of their own life. So I like to say, even with connectedness, it's very much about being able to recognize why something happened. Mm-hmm. So 
results. Not that things are, so yes, things happen for a reason. And yes, you will stay on your path. And yes, if I'm doing something that's probably not, well, I like to think if I'm on my path, things go smoothly. The minute I go off my path, um, things start to go a bit rocky, which reminds me to go back on the path. Um, and it's being able to be alert to the fact that I'm on rocky ground that helps me go back onto my path. It's not that I'm on rocky ground because I'm supposed to be on rocky ground, if that makes any sense at all. Yeah, it's oversimplifying to say connectedness is just going to accept whatever's going to happen because it was meant to be and it's out of your hands. You know, it sounds hard to be effective if that's how you live, live every day. It's just that everything's meant to be. Well, what's the, <laughs> why show up yeah. if everything's exactly. meant to be? And that's, that's right. I, I like hearing that from you with connectedness because I do think that sometimes it does get misunderstood as just being this super zen kind of theme of whatever happens will be fine um and there's a there's a slight but very significant difference between whatever happens will be fine and this happened for a reason yeah yeah and the the, the magic part about connectedness is being able to sense it so that mm. when something does happen you can think yep i was in the right place at the right time and it's just noticing uh, and it's those coincidences where you'll be thinking about someone and someone calls or um, you'll be I'm trying to think of one of the most recent examples. Um, oh, I can't think of anything off the top Nicole, of my head. While you're thinking, let me, let me throw this statement in. As I'm listening to you guys talk, I get this inc incredible sense of this idea of self-healing systems. We spend a lot of time in technology thinking about this. In other words, when things breaks, the system itself knows how to repair it and fix itself. And, and I hear that a lot in you, especially in your leadership and in your leadership roles, this, this ability to kind of sense, and I, and I think this is a great characteristic of a leader and could really use it to their advantage, of sensing when the team has broken parts to be able to, to connect those back together, to realize, okay, here's where we broke here, you know, to use your web analogy. Mm -hmm. The web is broken here. How do, I, how do I get to that part? How do I put that back together? And, and make it whole again so it's connected to the whole. And that's, I think, really important in the team setting that we're able to sense those things and that there's someone there who can say, hey, there's some broken parts and either fix them or help get them fixed based on the team dynamic, right? But do you, do you get that? Do you agree with that kind of that self-healing oh. system? Oh, definitely. And I think you've phrased it so perfectly. It is very much about that. That's, that's that ability to pull out above timeline and so that's what I mean by it. you pull out above timeline and watch it all happening as it's as it's happening and see that big picture and recognize where something needs to be reconnected yeah teams don't aren't good at that generally they they tend to go from order to chaos when you when you put teams together <laughs> and so they are constantly you know as a as a manager as a leader you've got to be constantly kind of reining pieces in have been paying attention to certain sections it's honestly I don't have that I don't have this theme. It's it's middle or very low for me. And I have to depend on people to come to me. That's kind of an includer connectedness idea, right? Is yeah. when, you, when you're dealing with people to be able to say, there's a break in our continuity here, you know, to go, to go back to, again, very physical. When we think about electricity, the, in the grid, there has been a break in our continuity and we can no longer get power to this section of the grid. Uh, the the whole grid is now disconnected in some ways, or there's a portion of the grid that's disconnected. And you need to move to that, right, with connectedness. I'm sure there's situations where you've gone in with teams where you can sense areas where they're disconnected. And you're saying, you know, guys, gals, ladies, men, we need to focus on this piece and get them to that, right? To get them to that. Any examples that you can think of right off the top of your head where that was, maybe you could provide that powerful input? Yeah, well, even um, the most obvious example that I think of straight away is in the staff room, uh, like a, a staff common room and um, having different, at a, at a school, for example, where you've got the maths department, the English department, science departments, and everyone having their own agendas, everyone having their own ideas. And yet we, we were redecorating the um, common room, staff common room. And so trying to work out how the common room could uh, accommodate the thinkers that were more the maths department and, think, and the more creative types that were the English and the art department. And so being able to just pull above the individual um, needs 
and think, okay, collectively, what do we all need? What are the most important things as a collective and, and bring it all together? Yeah, particularly uh, beneficial in the enterprise or in even the small business, right, where you're coming in and it's all these different people and they need to have these connections. Oftentimes, they themselves don't know where things are broken, where they're not. They're blinded, right? They're kind of blinded by their own biases. And then with this connectedness, you can kind of come in fairly quickly, probably survey the whole in, in some with some speed, right? That's the talent of being able to come in, ask some questions, get some input from people, and and very quickly begin to build that that web, so to speak, and maybe even see intuitively, like, hey guys, and 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 sometimes we just need an outside voice, anyways, right, to say these things. But Definitely. hey, we've got these. You're broken here, or this isn't working. Um, SP had said, I think that was, or, or when it said, sound, uh, she heard a little restorative in my statement and yeah, there may be, you know, the, the ability to go in and fix it. Although I think that may in connectedness, it needs to put those pieces together to find wholeness. Like you don't feel right until yeah. the system is whole. Right. And that may be a little bit different than when we think of pure restorative, that may be a little bit different in the sense of going after individual or fixing things that are broken. In this case, the broken piece is the grid. And to get the grid complete, you've got to go in and put those connections together or at least facilitate that. Um, do you find when, when you're in those scenarios, do you find an effective way? How do you communicate that? Or how, how have you found effective ways to communicate that back to the grid, so to speak? Because that can be, right? That can be another challenge is like, I'm not broken. Don't tell me I'm yeah. broken, right? <laughs> Um, yeah. How do you, have you found some effective ways to commun as a leader to communicate that back? I think one of the main ways, and, and specifically while you were talking, I was thinking about different times I've been in meetings. And I'll often, when I'm in a meeting, I'll sit back and I listen to everybody. It's very similar to how I am when I coach. And I'll be taking notes the whole way. Um, and I'll do my brainstorm of how it all comes in together and then be able to feed back what each person has said and when you feed back in a particular way, uh, they can actually see from a more, a more objective point of view, and that's when it will all come together. Yeah, and not always magically or not always correctly, right? I mean, we we have these great ideas and like, oh, it <laughs> should just happen, and yet we're dealing with people who are messy and broken, and right. And so, even though we try, have you come uh, have you come up against situations? Or no matter how much you try, the system would just not heal itself. It would just not repair. And, you know, it's a little broken, right? I mean, I think sometimes in leadership, we, just because we say doesn't mean everybody does, you know, right? No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It, it's, and see, I don't know whether this is my connectedness or maybe my positivity a little bit coming in. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I know I am very, I am very ideological. But I would like to think that most of the time it is possible. It is possible to bring people together. It just sometimes takes a bit of time and patience. And I must, yeah. It, you know what I would say is, and I'll full disclaimer, I've got <laughs> positivity, connectedness, and strategic here. But I would sort of use a connectedness answer to that of, well, if the system is just broken, it's probably for a reason. Well, very or it, that's not the end. <laughs> you know, maybe... Maybe it's okay that that system is broken because it's going to lead you to something else. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. maybe restoring it to its original order is not what's not necessarily intended, right? It needs change for change's sake. And so you're going to recreate new, you know, new, in our brain, using our brain, new synapses that, that maybe bypass the broken old ones to, uh, right. to get it. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah credit is we yeah, you know, one of the words we haven't used enough, I don't even know I've said it in the last 50 minutes, but is just this holistic uh, nature of, of connectedness of, yeah, if this system is broken, I immediately, if my connectors, I immediately get curious about what that means for the next system, or is there going to be some benefit someday from us not using that broken system or from that team not getting along? Maybe one of them was supposed to leave and do great things somewhere else. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And it's, maybe that's where that's different than restorative, Micah. Maybe right. you just answered right. Is restorative is going to want to fix that old system. And maybe yeah. that's not the, maybe the connectedness is there's a different way or a better way or 
a different way to reconnect to this. Our brain does this kind of naturally without us even thinking about it. If we get, if we have brain damage, it will begin to reroute itself, not necessarily try to repair the damage, but realize, okay, that, that section's off limits. Let me reroute. The brain is really, as we think about it, is a huge connected, to use this, you know, to use that term, uh, organ. It always wants to be put itself back together in a connected form. And so it's always searching for those ways elect with electricity to put itself back together as whole. And it may take different routes to get there, Micah. So just interesting as we think yeah. of, as we compare those two, sometimes it's not always about fixing what was wrong, but maybe cutting that part out and re-adding uh, what, what needs to be done to, to get it complete. Definitely, definitely. Nicole, I've just got one more question for you before we kind of come to a close here. Um, based on everything you've learned, you've got great awareness of your connectedness. And you mentioned that giving it a word and having a vocabulary for how you'd always been was so powerful. If you think about your journey with connectedness, um, what have you learned from this theme that you would advise other leaders with connectedness about? I think the main thing I would, the, the, the main thing I would say is to, to share and to be um, verbalize the what you are intuiting um, again I think being an English teacher vocabulary and having a a direct vocabulary has always been very important to me to be able to share exactly what it is you're thinking or feeling and when you see a connection or when you see how things are all coming together I think it's really important to be able to build those bridges it's really important to be able to give that big picture view and it's very important to be able to verbalize it and to verbalise it in such a way that it is solid and grounded because there are so many people who, who need that anchoring and connectedness needs anchoring as well. And so I think if connectedness can keep its feet firmly on the ground and then branch out like a tree, and this is another sort of one more analogy that, you know, the, the redwood forest analogy that is often used, How that's another one I really love. So you've got all the trees and yet they're connected underneath through the very intricate um, root system. And they're all communicating through that intricate root system. And each tree is reliant on the other trees within the system in order to feed themselves. And so as a, as a leader, understanding that you might be the, the mother tree or the main tree within the, um, within the forest, and you're communicating with everyone out through the, through the root system, that elaborate root system, where it's one big ecosystem, a whole forest. And that's why those redwood trees grow so tall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. That's Nicole, beautiful. You've, Nicole you've, you've, you've filled us with filled some us beautiful, with some beautiful, beautiful analogies. analogies. Uh, so thanks for bringing your English teacher to us today. Uh, so many great stories. In fact, I just posted on Instagram a picture of a spider <laughs> with this idea of, of kind of hold the moment. I think you brought a lot of the beauty of connectedness, but also a lot of the kind of hard hitting leadership capability. So thanks for helping us see a lot more of that perspective. Um, in, in, in general perspective uh, that, that connectedness brings. And thanks for doing the great work that you do as a leader who has connectedness. Thank you. Thank you. It's been wonderful talking to both of you. It's been great, Nicole. Thanks for staying up just practically. Thanks for staying <laughs> up so late for us. I, I love that analogy of the, of the forest because uh, the trees will actually, some trees will warn other trees of impending right. danger from mm -hmm. a disease standpoint. And I think that's a great example of in leadership. You know, we think about this through leadership. I think that's a great example of how, those with high connectedness can help the teams in warning them, hey, Definitely. there's impending danger or I'm sensing things beginning to break down here. And that really adds a lot of value into what we do from a team standpoint. If you're a leader and you don't have that, I know it's mean you can't be a leader. Um, it just means you may want to see, you want to might want to search. I think, Micah, I think I have a new appreciation for connectedness. I've done two of these, but I'm not sure I've quite seen it as I've seen it today. So Thanks to the both of you yeah, for kind of bringing this out and teaching me some. See, even you can do these every week and still learn. So we'd love to have you. we would love to have you come out and join us. And just because you've heard one doesn't mean there isn't great content in others. And so I appreciate both of you for uh, for your insights today. We'll remind everyone to take full advantage of all the resources we have available at the Gallup Strength Center. Just gallupstrengthcenter.com. You can send us your questions or comments if you'd like to be a guest blogger or be considered as a guest blogger. Send us your fully formed blog. We're looking for four to 600 words and you can send it into us, coaching at gallup.com. Put guest blogger in the subject line. That will get routed over to Micah and we would be able to consider you for one of our blog posts. You can also catch the recorded audio and video of this program as well as all the past ones are available on our blog. And we're doing a lot of work on our blog right now. So if you're 
listening to this in the summer of 2017, we are doing a lot of updates to it. We appreciate your feedback. We're getting that feedback via Facebook, but you can send us, uh, well, or you can visit the blog, coaching.gallup.com. If you're interested in becoming a Gallup Certified Strings Coach, we mentioned that earlier. You can see a list of all of our courses, and we do have some brand new courses available for you out there as well. They're available on our courses page. Go to courses dot gallup.com and don't forget if you have questions coaching at gallup.com if you found this helpful we'd ask that you share it I want to thank you coming out today to be part of us live or to listen to the recording and with that we'll say goodbye everybody <laughs>